Welcome back to my channel. Today in my 1986 Mercedes T1 camper. Why I'm doing this video? Well, I recently had some issues with the clutch. After a longer highway ride, the clutch was not separating at all. I could push the pedal all the way to the floor. So this is a clear indication for air in the system or a giant leak, but I couldn't find, find any leaks. So I bled the system and clutch was coming back. But after a few minutes, the problem occurred again. So this tells me that there's somewhere air coming in. And the problem is only occurring after highway rides or after high load rides like uphill or something like this. So I guess it has something to do with the higher vibration levels while you're going on the highway. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I found out that the master cylinder is leaking. I don't know if that's the only thing that is leaking, but I will show how to change that. So to see if your master cylinder is leaking, just have a look by the clutch pedal where the master cylinder is mounted into the firewall. If you can see some brake fluid or some dirt at this rubber boot, that's quite an evident sign that it's leaking. You can just pull this whole boot back and have a look at the cylinder itself. And if I shine a light in there, you might be able to see that it's all wet with brake fluid. It's not a lot yet, so it's not that bad. The clutch does still work most times, but yeah, if you have some problems with your clutch and you see that, it's quite evident sign that the master cylinder is going bad. For the tools you need, it's quite easy. Get yourself some rags and also get yourself some rubber gloves to protect your hands from brake fluid because it's not that healthy. You're going to need uh, two wrenches size 13 or in my case I use a wrench and a ratchet and also a small extension won't hurt. Next I found a screw that fits into the rubber hose coming from the reservoir going to the master cylinder. I will use this to block the line to prevent the fluid from spilling everywhere. Otherwise, you have to drain the complete reservoir to prevent making a mess. Also, I got myself a little bit of rubber line with another screw plugged into it just to plug the connection at the master cylinder itself. Again, just to keep the mess down a little bit, but this is optional. But rather have a little bit more work and then don't have so much cleanup to do. It's up to you. Also, you're going to need some pliers to pull out the counter pin at the clutch pedal. Doesn't really matter what you use as long as you can get it out without destroying it. And probably the most important thing is a line wrench size 12 to loosen the hydraulic line. You may be able to get away with using a normal wrench, but I really don't recommend that since it's really easy to round off these connectors and if you do so, you're in quite big trouble. So get yourself a set of these, they're not that expensive. Just make sure that you don't buy the cheapest Chinese ones since they should be made out of quality steel. You see these are compliant with the uh, German industry standards, so I trust in these. Again, size 12. <laughs> Okay, so here you see the master cylinder and here you see the hydraulic fluid reservoir. So here you see the master cylinder and the fluid reservoir. First I'm going to disconnect this rubber line and plug both the master cylinder connector and this rubber line with the screw I showed you earlier. So just carefully pull off this line. I had it off recently because I changed them but if they are old it's better to just cut a little bit of the line and peel it off that way to prevent breaking this connector. Of course, since I'm changing the whole master cylinder, I am pretty sure it comes with a new uh, connector in the most case, but if you're not sure, it's better to save it. Okay, plug that side and plug the line from the master cylinder and you see I have plugged both uh, connections with the screw so 
the amount of fluid that came out is very minimal. Just let me clean up this a little bit and get this line out of the way. Okay, so now I will loosen this connector. You can see someone already had a crack at this and rounded it off a little bit. So really, I recommend using line wrenches. And you see, it came loose. In case uh, this, you have a hard time loosening that, it really helps putting some penetrating oil on it. I also did that two days ago and you can already see that fluid is dripping out. I will tighten it again. I just wanted to make sure that I can break it loose uh, since now it's easier while the master cylinder is still sort of bolted to the firewall. So clean up that mess and we're going to continue inside. Okay so the next step will be to take out one of these counter pins doesn't really matter as on which side but it's easier to reach on that side so I go for this one. Okay so you see I just pulled it out. Just take your pliers and try to straighten it out a little bit. This will make reassembling easier. That, uh, that will be fine. It's easy to get to here so it might be actually a good idea to change that but I don't have new ones so yeah, I will reuse it. It's fine. Okay so take off a washer and then you can pull out the pin from the other side. Just push the pedal in a little bit. That will help to give you some play and see the connecting rod to the master cylinder is free. Next step is to remove these two nuts side 13 that hold the master cylinder to the firewall. Ideally you would have a buddy helping you since uh, these are through bolts so you have to have something on the other side to hold them. If you don't have another helping set of hands you can do what I did. Let me show you. So you see I just took a wrench and wedged it in here and you can do the same thing for the lower bolt and then just take the ratchet from the inside to take out the nuts. Okay, so let's take them out. I also put a little bit of penetrating oil on these. They're not rusted up or anything but after 30 years staying in the same place a little bit of penetrating oil always helps. And the first nut just fall off. Let me reposition that wrench. Okay, so same story for the lower one. Take off the nut and watch out, there's also a washer underneath. Actually, it is or better it was a spring washer you see it's squished completely flat um, it's a good idea to change these if you have some on hand I will check later if I have some replacements okay so we're ready now to take out the master cylinder so get yourself a rack and some gloves and or trust your blind wrench and just take out this connector and you see it's really helpful if you already broke it loose and be prepared that there will be some dripping but it will be only the amount of fluid that is trapped inside the master cylinder. Well that is really a rusty flare nut. I think I should clean that up before we put it all back together. is a little bit bent so I'm still not really able to 
turn it by hand. It's annoying. Okay, so I got the line disconnected. And now you can just pull the whole master cylinder through and make sure that you don't lose the bolts. And cover the connector with rag to prevent fluid from leaking out everywhere and to prevent dirt from getting in. Okay, my spare patch just arrived, so let's have a look inside the box. Okay, I always like to compare the old and the new part before tearing apart the plastic bags to make return easier. But uh, it all looks the same, push rod has the same length, the mounting points are the same, so I guess we're fine here. Actually one thing, the new one doesn't seem to come with this gasket, so I think we have to reuse the old one. But this is only to keep uh, water out of the inside of the vehicle, so as long as it's not completely trashed, it's okay to reuse this. Okay, so here's our new part. You see it's not a genuine spare part, it's uh, aftermarket, but I'm completely fine with that. And leave this plug in the uh, output port until it's assembled, so um, there's no risk of getting dirt or anything inside. And make sure that it's moving. You already can hear it's pumping air, but make sure it's moving freely, otherwise uh, it will be annoying to put it in and notice when you put everything back together that it's not working. In case you wonder, this is the original spare part number for the Mercedes-Benz part. Okay, so just grab your bolts, of course grab your new part, and I already put the gasket on that I saved from the old one. The gasket goes to the outside and just keep the connectors upright and fish it in there. Oh and make sure the gasket seats properly. Okay, just have a look around, I've got the gasket right, looks like, and now I'm going to remove that plug and reconnect the line, of course now with a little bit of play that is easier. Clean off the connector and the threads as good as I can, I don't really want to go in with a wire brush, otherwise I may get dirt inside of there. And really try to get this started by hand to prevent cross threading and this goes in really smooth okay so save your plug to put it in the old part so it does not uh, mess up your whole scrap pile okay now on the inside reinstall your nuts and washers Okay, first one in. Second one in. So let's start tightening them. This one's 
seems to be spinning at the outside. Oh no, it's just the loose. top one is spinning outside so the already known trick with the wedge spanner again okay now we're turning something lower one seems to be no problem Okay, now reconnecting the push rod. So push the thing in a little bit. And it might be easier to watch out that this ends up on the pedal while you're putting it in, but nah, worked out for me that way too. So take your pin with one washer insert it like you took it out second washer and your counter pin Almost there. Okay, so pedal is secured now. Okay, so now for the hydraulics. So I pull out my plug and get the line on the new master cylinder and so far mission accomplished. I will loosen this connector a little bit until fluid drops out. That makes venting a little bit easier. You see now fluid starts dropping out, so I now tighten this line. But don't go crazy on this, it just has to be snapped. Don't over tighten these, otherwise you may break the line of the fitting. Okay. Okay, so after a lot of work bleeding the system, the clutch feels now good. So let's take it for a little ride. And clutch works fine. First gear. And we're going.